That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about, spoiler alert, the sixth film directed by Michael Showalter, which Focus Features is releasing December 2nd, 2022. I thought this film was very good. I second that, yes. I know Michael's other works. Uh, yep, uh, the writer of Wet Hot American Summer, uh, Hello, My Name is Doris, which starred Sally Field. Uh, the Big Sick with Kumail Nanjiani, uh, which is kind of about his life a little bit, which reminded me of, of this film too. Um, the Eyes of Tammy Faye was his last film, and then we reviewed uh, The Big the Lovebirds. So the basic story is very simple. It's about a gay couple, Michael and Kit. We see their relationship over the course of its 13 years, which ends with Kit dying from cancer. But it's a frame narrative told by Michael, played by Jim Parsons, and we're getting sort of the greatest hits of their relationship. A big portion of it revolves Kit's illness. Um, but I just thought it was a very well done, like authentic, loving story. I did get emotional quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I really have nothing to say negative about it, except one thing, which is just an interesting casting choice, which I guess we can talk about, but... Technically two interesting casting choices, but... Well, let's talk about <laughs> it. Get it out of the way. So, I think Jim Parsons, now you know you shouldn't have been playing this role. <laughs> he does not look right, or he doesn't seem the right age. It I, just feels miscast. I think that's the, it, it seems the wrong age. Uh, yeah. Because when they meet, which would have been like the early 2000s, I'm, I'm assuming he's supposed to be like in his mid to early 30s. And he looks like a man in his late 40s or early 50s. And they try to de-age him with like the baseball cap. And I don't know if they did something to his hair and face, but it's not working. And then when you combine that with the guy he's into, Kit, played by... Ben Aldridge. They just don't match. And I'm not trying to be like one's better looking than the other. But we all know when you see certain couples, it's like, mm, someone must have a lot of money or he must have a really great personality. But because we're meeting these two people at the same time they're meeting each other, there was nothing about them that made me think that Kit would be really into Michael, especially because we learned that Kit ends up having an affair with a co-worker played by um, Anthony Porowski, the guy from Queer Eye, who many people think is very attractive. So they kind of look more appropriate, I guess, which well, sounds weird to say, but... Well, they also look kind of similar. Sure. So I'm not trying to be one of those, like, he's a six and he's an eight, or, but they do seem like a very odd couple. And I just didn't quite get the, like, where the, the, the flame was ignited initially. Sure. Of course, once they've been together a while, then I, I think, like you like to say, we sort of settle into it and it feels right. Yeah. But initially, I was a little like, mm, I don't know about this. Yeah, I think it's that early bar scene where Jim Parsons is in the baseball hat that's like, this is uncomfortable. That could have been Michael Jackson in a baseball like cap. And I would have probably felt the same way, like, this does not look right. So a device that's used is related to Michael's character, a loves television. And because most of the film is basically told like in a flashback, all of it is really, it's sort of punctuated with Michael in his head has created this like 80s style sitcom. And that's how as the audience we learn about parts of his childhood. For instance, when Kit is told he has this neuroendocrine tumor, then we get like a little snippet from Michael's head sitcom where like he's a little kid and his mom is on the phone calling a doctor to get lab results. I really liked that. I thought it was very effective. Uh, yeah, it also reminded me of Natural Born Killers because they mm. used sitcom, uh, the essence of that in that film. And I was also ways. certain that the lady playing his mom in the sitcom was Maya Bialik. You're telling me it's not. Nope. But you don't know her name, so. Uh, she was not. I'll verify it on my own. You, uh, you should have already, but I'm telling you it's not the actress you think it is, yeah. So, getting back to when they first meet at the bar, very clunky start, and Kit invites Michael back to his place. And they are trying to be sexual, and it's awkward because clearly Michael's uncomfortable, and then he shares that he was an FFK, a former fat kid. 
And so he has body image issues and he's acknowledging like that Kit is so much more confident, has such a nicer body than he does. And so then they sort of take it down a notch and allow themselves to actually communicate. And I think that's where the relationship starts to gain traction. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. I thought that felt like, because this movie's PG-13, right? I, we've recorded, this is the third attempt at recording this video, so I don't know if I already said this, but to be, this movie feels like a mature version of Bros. Sure. Like for the 40 plus crowd, which I'm a part of. Um, so I, I think like how they meet in the bar is very similar to the scene in Bros and them going home and sort of the awkwardness. It all, it, it felt very authentic and adult without being raunchy. Sure. And I'm not against raunchy. I actually thought bros could have been more raunchy. And these two movies don't even compare. I will say, though, it's a shame that bros got all that attention. All that hype, yeah. For being so mediocre to me. I think this movie deserves attention because I feel like this is a movie, like, I could show my mom. And I think she would get something from it and she would, like, be emotional. And I think this movie has a lot more appeal and is still being very true to this type of relationship. Mm -hmm. So, I, but but getting back to the FFK stuff, I like that it approached that in a way that didn't feel like comedic. It was just very very matter of fact, and yeah. So that was a point that I liked. Okay, so Michael is being very hesitant about having Kit over at his place, which would be ideal because Kit has a roommate who he refers to as monosyllabic. Which I think is funny because then when you meet her, she really is. Yeah. But I, I liked her character. Kirby, yeah. But when Michael finally has Kid over, I thought it was such a good scene because he is very anxious. So you know it's going to be good. And I'm like, I at first, what did you think his apartment would be like? I thought he'd be like a hoarder. Kind of like the Sally Field character in Home, My Name is Taurus. I also thought he'd be a hoarder. He's not. He's very neat and clean. But he is obsessed with the cartoon The Smurfs. So this whole ass grown ass man who looks 15 years older than he's supposed to be has Smurfs everywhere. But that scene I think is done really well because of course we're thinking how is Kit going to react? And instead of being like, this is so weird, I can't, he decides to share with Michael that he hooked up with someone at the gym. And even though they're not monogamous, he feels conflicted because this is the first time that he's felt like like responsible to someone like he wants something more and then that's when they sort of commit and then it moves very rapidly where they become boyfriends move in together and then we get the highs and the lows so well before we get there the scene where kid comes out to his parents yeah he's not out to his parents and but he uh has an appendectomy and so his parents his parents are in pennsylvania yes so they decide to drive overnight uh, and meet his friend Michael at the hospital. And before they get there, Kit tells Michael, you have to de-gay by my apartment. So then there's a scene where... Like the birdcage. Yes, where Kit and where Kit's roommate and Michael are removing stuff. And I thought a, a part that made me emotional was not the removing of the like sexy pictures and dirty books. As a Christmas gift, Kit had made a space in his closet for Michael to keep some overnight stuff and some sundries. And he had put Michael's name like on a little plaque. So Michael had to remove that. But anyway, then the parents meet him. It's awkward. Yeah, it's super awkward. And be, because, you know, when you're, he's speaking like he's already familiar with them. And they're like, who is this strange man that's calling my husband Bob? Uh, and why does he know where your sheets are? And, because then they all go back to Kit's yeah. apartment. And that's super awkward. And finally, like you just said, when Michael knows where the extra sheets are for the futon, Sally Fields, Kit's mom, is like, hola, hola, hola. This is so weird. Why does this random man, who is this? And why does he know where your sheets are? And finally, Kit says, I'm gay. And then something that made me laugh was then Michael says, I'm gay too. And then the roommate, the Kirby. lady who never talks. Kirby goes, I'm, I'm gay. Yeah. So, But then the reaction from the parents was so sweet because... It's the reaction that you would want. Yeah. Which is like, why wouldn't you tell me? You think I'm a monster? You think like... And even the dad is like... Oh, Bill Irwin, he's very sweet. Yeah. Super cute. And he's like, you know, we're actually pretty... What does he say? Like pretty hip people. Yeah. Like, you know, we had tickets to go to Woodstock. We didn't go, but we were going to go. And they're very accepting of their son. So that's lovely. But 
I do want to mention, I really like the music in the movie. There's some really nice uh, musical selections. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So then we get a Christmas. I think, was there a Gold Frap song that I really yeah, liked? Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah. There's a Robin song. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's Kylie good. Minogue. Uh, so they're having Christmas in their new place together. And Michael's co-worker slash friend brings a date. And this guy is one of those, like... <laughs> They've only been dating for two weeks and he wants to give a toast at this Christmas party dinner. And he's saying, like, I want to toast to this couple who've been together for 13 years and they're such an inspiration. And everyone at the table's giggling because he's new to the group. Like, oh, y'all don't know. And then we get a montage of Michael and Kit in therapy, like couples therapy. I thought that was very well done. And the therapist is played by the screenwriter, right? David Marshall Grant and Dan Savage wrote the screenplay. But yeah. That was really good because we did couples therapy for years and those moments seemed very uh, like like verbatim the same <laughs> in, in some instances. So I thought it was very well done and it ultimately leads to the therapist saying, I think the two of you resent each other, but it's also clear you love each other. So I recommend you take time apart to figure that shit out. So they separate, move into different apartments, but then... Like, the following Christmas, Kit is having, like, pain. Mm -hmm. Or at the Christmas party, he sees Kit's having pain, and then he asks him about it, and he says, you know, my butt hurts. And then he goes and gets all the tests done. And then there's a montage where Michael says, I've already made appointments at the top endocrinologist in town. We're going to go next week. And so we go to three of them. And the first two are very optimistic. But then the third one, which... I like how it was written because it starts off like she's like this supermodel doctor and it's like lights, camera, action. But then she says, you have like stage four cancer. Very so aggressive. we need to get your ass into some chemotherapy stat. So it was a really, I, I thought it was well done that it's sort of as the audience, we felt like, oh, this might be okay. And then it just knocks you down. But then of course, Michael's love for Kit overrides their issues and he commits to taking care of him so we see that journey well and then they kind of reconnect again too yeah and, uh, and get married actually and they do end up getting married <clears throat> i do think another note i have down is these people aren't aging properly because <laughs> you know jim parsons is the only one who looks like probably like he should be in his late 40s but then kid up until his chemo when he loses his hair and starts looking sick doesn't look the right age and then sally field and um Bill Irwin. Bill Irwin don't really appear to age. I mean, they do mention that Sally's hair is more gray, but you can't really tell because when we first meet her, her hair was up. That's what they always do with uh, the older people in movies, though. They just get to look like that for the entirety of the running Yeah, time. I mean, I know it's hard with that age, like, with that time period to like really show significant whatever, but it, I did find it a little bit distracting. And you haven't seen The Big Sick, but there, there are kind of similarities, I'd say, but I preferred this. Uh, I, I don't know, for, oh. for various reasons that are probably... Biased, a really but. good scene is when Kit goes to his first chemo treatment. They understood that he would have a bed because, you know, it's like an hours long thing and he's uncomfortable because he has a tumor in his ass. Yeah, he ass. can't sit for four hours. So, and the, nur and the nurse is not being rude, but she's just like, well, sorry, we don't have it. Like, there are other people here doing it, so sorry. And Michael goes out and like... I don't think he caused... I mean... I like how it was done. He caused a scene. Yeah, but it wasn't like, like you know, a Karen moment. It was more like, I, my husband, and they're not even married at that point yet, but he's like, my husband cannot sit for four hours. We were promised a bed. Y'all need to find him a bed. I don't care if you have to take your ass to Ikea, to Jennifer Convertibles. You're I, I liked how it was done. It's, it, and it made me feel like... Well, know. and as he does say, they worked for Shirley MacLaine. It's that, it's that terms of endearment moment. Yeah, yeah. Something that also appealed to me is... Uh, because I think also for us, a big thing that marked our relationship is when we first started dating, that's when Drag Race yeah. came out. Yeah. And in this film, Drag Race is a big part of like their routine. So I liked that. Um, so a final trip they all take when it's clear that Kit does not have long to live. Michael, Kit, and then Kit's parents all go to Ocean City to spend like some time in a bungalow by the ocean. There is a sex scene that I thought was a little interesting because it's just a hand job, and I don't know what that was supposed to signify. I think that they were reconnecting intimately because they hadn't had sex maybe in a very long time. So I guess 
that felt, I don't know, that, that, that was interesting to me. They do end up getting married. Um, now that kid is going to die, he's like, let's get married, which I thought was kind of funny. Like, oh, now you want to marry me now that you're about to die. But also that time frame, they probably couldn't have gotten married sooner. So I thought it was very sweet. So on Kit's deathbed, Anthony Porowski plays, at first Michael's jealous of Kit's co-worker, who he refers to as Tom Daly. And Tom Daly's this little swimmer. But then it, when we meet Sebastian, it's Anthony, Anthony from Queer Eye. I didn't think that matched the Tom Daly reference. Also, it didn't. They could just have hired any random person for the limited screen time this person has. I didn't need that. But um, when they decide to get married, and there's and Michael smoking weed for the first time, he asks Kit, "Like, have you been having sex with Sebastian?" And he says yes. And then they have a moment, but it's smoothed out. But on Kit's deathbed. Anthony Sebastian shows up to say his goodbyes. And I was like, I don't know about this. I do not know. If one of your side pieces shows up to your deathbed, it's going to be a problem. I already told you, I'm going to give the nurses something to talk about for a while. I just, he just was so like, let's all leave the room so they can talk. And then I feel like Mike Tyson in that interview. With, oh, with Robin Givens. Where, <laughs> like I'm stuck. You know, Nick beats me, but it's okay. <laughs> I've learned one of how, my one of my side I've, pieces. I've learned how to manage it. Okay. Um, but what did you think? How would you feel? <laughs> there might be a scene. I don't know. It, it, it's all context. It's I'm all being context. I'm, I'm being funny about you, but in reality, but in actuality, how would you feel if I'm on my deathbed and one of my side pieces? I would feel like la, 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 be like, hold on, let's talk first. I just need you to know. That I'm letting you come in here and you have five minutes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it would be, but... Uh, there will be furniture moving. Uh, security will be involved. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think um, it was a touching moment to see that, you know, it's not about what I would do. It's what these characters did. And, and Michael went high and let, you know, the side piece say his goodbyes. And Sebastian was grateful. Like, he was crying. And, you know, I... I just thought there's a lot to talk about in relation to this movie. Yeah, I, th I thought it was very sweet. Everyone saying their goodbyes after Kit flatlines in the hospital bed was very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ending when Kit dies, well, well, right before he dies, Michael wants a moment to himself with Kit in the hospital bed. And then he, he sort of switches it up in his mind and thinks, what if this were a TV show? And this is just a scene. And then all of a sudden, it turns into like, we're on a TV set. And Kit gets out of bed and they're doing hair and makeup and he's going to craft services. And then Michael's interviewing Kit. Because I also didn't mention that Michael, his career in TV has elevated. And now he has like his own like Access Hollywood or whatever type show. So he's interviewing Kit, his dying husband, basically asking him, about how he feels about things and then how do you feel about me and what should I do and my kid tells Michael enough that Michael's able to tell him like okay you can go now and then he dies I thought that was very emotional yeah um and then the very end is because we also find out because Michael loves tv he loved the show Felicity and which I never watched and of course the ending of Felicity is she packs her bags and moves to LA so that's what Michael does. The end. Um, yeah, I thought it was a beautiful story. I also wanted to mention, since we got so much negativity about me commenting on the white gays in the movie Bros, it wasn't about them being white per se, because I feel like this movie is about white gays. Yes. And I thought it was very well done, because these characters are presented in a way that seems true to who these characters are. Because there is some diversity in their friend group. Yeah, Nina. Uh, Kid's best friend is, is a black, black lady. lady. So, and then we see other diversity throughout the cast, but it all feels like very natural. So I just want to point that out, that this is a movie about two gay white guys that I think is very good. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with that. I agree. What else do you have to say? Uh, that, that's about it. I was just uh, quite surprised. I guess I didn't know what to expect going into it. But... Well, you know, I feel like we had to review it because it's a gay movie called Spoiler Alert, and that's all we do is spoil movies. Sure. So I was 
very pleasantly surprised at how much I liked it. Um, yeah. I was too. I think maybe I'm not used to seeing things at this about gay with gay characters that are at this level of writing and production still. Like sure. it, it does feel. It still feels somewhat uh, like an anomaly, but. It almost feels like something that I would have seen like 20 years ago, but it doesn't feel dated at all. But I think, because you know, the gay movies from the late 90s, early 2000s, I feel like the storytelling was better. It was, but there was always centered around usually white gay men and AIDS. Right. <laughs> were, right. But the driving force between a lot of those films. So, so, so I'm not, this does not feel dated at all, but um, it, like, like the quality of the storytelling and the, and the performances... You said someone was miscast besides Jim Parsons. I meant Anthony. Oh, yeah. We did not need him in this. I thought he was kind of distracting. He was, because it's like, why him? Let him sell that dog food he and JVN are making. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, what would you give this movie? Uh, Three and a half. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.